Hey everyone, Cash here, back with another video from Madden 15, and today I give you a series in review, the Detroit Lions franchise. We finished off the final fourth season in the last episode. We won the Super Bowl, and in this one I'm going to give you a review of the series, some highlights of players, and here I'm showing you what the roster looked like when we started this franchise. You see a lot of names that are not familiar at all that we have not seen since the very first couple games. A lot of guys cut in the preseason, but some guys that we traded away, Golden Tate that you saw in there in the wide receivers, we traded him away after the second season. Dominic Riola, he was only there for a couple years, but I wanted to give you a look at where this roster started, and then I'm gonna show you where it ended. So I'm gonna go through, highlight some of the players that performed very well for us, and just in general, just give you the sort of franchise career stats that some guys had. And then a little bit later, and I'll be touching on one more possible video that we may see from this series until we move on to Madden 16. So as we finish this up, you see DeAndre Levy there, another guy that did not stay with us all four years. And actually, I thought that this team didn't have a whole lot of changes, but looking through this original roster, I'm amazed at how much it actually did change. So we'll now take a look here at the current roster where it ends. You see Matthew Stafford now a 99 overall. We got Jeffrey Delgado. He is a second year player and then Devlier Dotson, a rookie who we drafted this past season. But take a look at Stafford's stats, 3,700 yards for his first season. That will only be beat by this most recent season, which I didn't even realize. He had 3,800 yards, so a good yardage year for Matthew Stafford. But the rest of the stats from 2017, not too great. He does have the most touchdowns, 31, but also the most interceptions, 20. 2016, though, going to be the best year for him. He had just eight interceptions. He did get hurt in that season, but he completed 70% of his passes, which far and away is the best numbers he had, but those last two years were Super Bowl winning years, and obviously Matthew Stafford was a big part of that. Another guy that was a big part of it was Matthew Arnold. We picked him in the first round in 2014, 26th pick. He was the first overall rated player on the draft board. He fell to us at 24. We had Reggie Bush and Joyce Bell. We took him anyways, and you see what this turned out to be. 1,700 yards after the first year he, we had Reggie Bush and Joyce Bell still, so he only had 600 yards, but 1,700, 1,600. Unbelievable performance from him. As you see, he ended up being the mid-90s overall. Next up is the wide receivers, Calvin. Johnson and this guy an absolute monster you see all those 1,000 yard seasons disappointed the only year he came up short was 2015 he only had 945 yards otherwise well above 1,000 yards every year and then this most recent season was the series high 13 touchdown receptions for him as well he only went over 100 re receptions one year in 2014 we have relied on him heavily that year next up is Davian Sherrod and this guy was probably the most one of the most disappointing players we drafted him in the second round in 14 but he never really materialized this was the guy we drafted after trading away Golden Tate. He was supposed to be that guy on the other side of Calvin Johnson, but you see he only went over 500 yards one time, and a big reason for that is the next guy here, Keyshawn Martin. We signed him at the preseason of our first year, and in 2014, he had 921 yards and seven touchdowns. This guy was amazing all four years. He has got to be, in my mind, one of the top three players in this series, if not the MVP, just because of the lack of expectation we had for him. He was absolutely unbelievable. He did have a down year in 15, but we'll see the next guy up, Eric Ebron, was a big reason for that. But in 2016, 2017, 1,100 yards and 14 touchdowns in 16. He did win best wide receiver in 2016. And then 17, another 1,000 yard season, only had two touchdowns. I was very surprised to see he only had two touchdowns in 2017, but he still made an effect. You see a former fourth round draft pick did win that best wide receiver award. So for him, one of the best players in this series. And then you see Eric Ebron had his best year in 2015, that down year for Keisha Martin, 952 yards, eight touchdowns. And then he went down the following two years, but I'm not gonna say because he regressed at all. It's just, we had so many weapons that it was hard to get the ball to everyone. So he did go down, but still a very solid player, Eric Ebron, very good tight end for us. And then look at the line. It didn't really change too much. Nicholas Cummings is a first year guy this year. He stepped in to play left guard. Stanley Werner was a guy that we drafted and turned into be an an unbelievable 94 overall. Travis Swanson was supposed to be the center when Dominic Rayola left, but we drafted Werner in the same year. 31st pick in the first round in 15, and he just became an unbelievable player. And then we have the pillars on the right side. Larry Warford and Landry Waddle played every single game for us on the right guard and right tackle positions. They are absolutely unbelievable players. And then we'll move on to the defense, and here's where we had some of the biggest changes. You see Devin Taylor there and Will Golston on the left end. Neither of them started because... 
Two seasons ago, we changed to the 3-4 defense, and our left end became Nick Fairley, and you're going to see the effect on his stats. 14, he had 15 tackles for loss, 14 sacks. A big year in 15, 25 and 17, but then in 16 and 17, 16, he goes for 19 sacks. He gets 14 and 17, and he absolutely flourished in that 3-4 defense. On the right side, Ezekiel Ansah, another 99 overall player, and he was just solid all four seasons. 17, though, was his biggest. 23 tackles for loss, 18 sacks. This guy was awesome. And then Adamic and Sue, the reverse of Nick Fairley. This guy did not like the 3-4 defense. 19 and 16, 25 and 25, 25 sacks in 2015. Then we switched to the 3-4 defense and he disappeared. I noticed and I could tell going through that second to last season, you don't call Sue's name as much and you see here eight sacks, five sacks, five sacks for a 99 overall rated and Dominic and Sue in 2017. He does not fit well in that 3-4 defense and maybe we shouldn't have paid him so much money. But as we go through the linebacking here, Tier Whitehead, Kyle Vinoy, both solid players for us on the left side. And in the middle, Steven Tullock, this guy, another one that flourished in the 3-4 defense. You see his production on the sack totals, 8, 3, 10, and 14. 29 tackles for loss, 14 sacks, 118 tackles for him in his last season. Absolutely awesome right there, him holding down the middle of that linebacking position. And then we have another guy to highlight here, Travion Pittman, the 22nd pick in 2015. This guy only going to be overshadowed by a certain safety we're going to talk about in a little bit. But Travion Pittman, one of our best draft picks we had in the entire series. He came in, started immediately at outside linebacker. We drafted him thinking he'd possibly be a backup, but we moved the defense around. He became a starter, and he flourished in this defense. 16 and 13 sacks in his two seasons. Looking at the corners, we got Darius Slayer. We're going to take a look at here. He had six interceptions in his first year, down to two in 15, but in 16 and 17, very good seeds for him. He is one of the few corners that has remained all four seasons. At free safety, Glover Quinn, solid, started every game for us at free safety. And then strong safety, we have Jazz Miles, 90 overall. He was a fourth round pick. And I remember this draft exactly two years ago. We were looking for a strong safety. We did not have one. I had a couple guys in the first round we were looking at, but they got taken. And Jazz Miles was someone in scouting that I identified as a very good player, or could be. And I think he even graded out as like a fifth rounder. We took him a little early, but he turned out to be unbelievable. Six interceptions in his first season. He won Defensive Rookie of the Year. I don't know why that last screen said Offensive Player of the Year, but he won Defensive Rookie of the Year over Travion Pittman. He had six interceptions. Two the next year. He did not do as well this past season, but the touchdowns, the guy had two touchdowns, it's going to say here in 16, but counting the preseason, he had like four touchdowns returned in his first year. He had one this past season. The guy was unbelievable, and considering where he was drafted, I think he might be our best draft selection we made in the entire series. The guy turned out to be an eight, a 90, excuse me, overall strong safety, drafted in the fourth round. Now we have Travion Pittman. He was obviously an unbelievable player. And then we have Matthew Arnold, who was just ridiculous. But considering Arnold was a first overall projected player, Travion Pittman was a first rounder as well. To have Jazz Miles in the fourth round, this guy was an unbelievable safety for us both seasons. So if I had to rank him, I'd probably go Jazz Miles Arnold and then Pittman and then our best signing by far in this entire series was Keisha Martin. That guy for what he was, he got released the fourth week of the preseason by the Texans and then we signed him and he turned into our second best wide receiver. So great pickup for us there. But as I'm going through here, we're seeing all the players that are going to become free agents. And I'm showing you this because I saw a couple requests to simulate the franchise a few years into the future. I don't have time to do a ton of seasons, but I am going to do one more. So I'm going to go through the offseason. I'm going to do the resigning the players, free agency, the draft. It's going to be a very consolidated, truncated offseason. And then I'm going to simulate through one more season to see how this team might do which I would assume pretty good since we're like a 92, 93 overall. You saw when I was going through the roster how many 99s and guys over 90 we had. So I, assuming we keep the team relatively the same, I think we should do pretty good. And also this one more reason why I wanted to do at least one more season. I forgot that we had three first round picks coming up. We, we excuse me, traded down in the last draft and we picked up the Dallas Cowboys pick. And that turned into be the third overall pick. So we have the third, the 24th, and the 32nd. So that alone, I at least wanted to go through one more offseason just to see how the draft went. The problem is I didn't do any scouting, so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. First, we're going to take a look at the legacy score for Trey as we end this one. He ended up with two Super Bowls, three NFC Championship games, and then one Coach of the Year award. And somehow, we still don't come close to Vince Lombardi. We're going to be a little ways down the list there. But 
What I was going to say, I did not do any scouting this year. I knew this was going to be the last season, so I did not scout at all. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do a lot of scouting, or at least just a few guys, just to get an idea so I can go at least through the draft and get some solid guys in the first round. We really don't have that many holes. It depends on how the re-signing goes. I mean, we do actually have quite a few players up to be re-signed. Matthew Stafford is a free agent. Uh, Eric Ebron is a free agent. And I think there's a couple other starters that are up for free agency. But this actually is the one question I have. If you've made it this far in the video, I do appreciate you watching. But I haven't had a lot of input from all of you throughout this series. So I'm gonna give you the opportunity to have some input regardless of how many of you respond. Um, I know there probably won't be too many. But I want to know what to do with Matthew Stafford. He is a 99 overall. He is, I'm assuming, going to want a lot of money. But considering how he has played the last couple seasons, I mean, we, I know we did win two Super Bowls. But do I re-sign Matthew Stafford or do I let him walk? Or I guess technically we could re-sign him and trade him. But that isn't necessarily the most realistic option. So we're going to keep it to do we re-sign him or do we not? So let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? Should we bring him back or do we hand the reins over to Jeffrey Delgado or sign a QB in free agency or draft another one. There are a few quarterbacks graded, excuse me, in the first round. So let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, that is going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed this series in review, please go ahead and give it a like below. Otherwise, subscribe to see any future videos that I make. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.